Yeah, just start with that. Just start with being in the big sky, having a head coaching role again. Uh, what are some of your impressions of the league, and what's it like just being back here? Well, um, I've known about this league for a long time, um, and certainly have a tremendous amount of respect for it, what it's done nationally, the players, the coaches. Uh, should I tell people, I think Eastern Washington had more guys drafted this year than half the Pac-12 teams. Um, great football, great coaches, great passion, uh, great tradition, and great history. Uh, all that stuff is is awesome. And like I said, I've just been in and around it. My daughter went to Montana. Uh, being at Boise, they were not in the big sky, but used to be. Uh, so been to a lot of those towns. Uh, know a lot of guys that have coached and or coached there now. And uh, have played there. So all that's great. Uh, being the head coach is... Um, I always tell young guys that want to be head coaches, I go, look, you just, you got to juggle a lot of balls, you got to like to juggle a lot of balls, you got to be able to take the heat. Uh, but Davis is a great place, um, an unbelievable place, really. Uh, tremendous firepower internationally, nationally, academically, it's a major institution. We have 35,000 students at our place. Um, tremendous potential. We've got to try to get everybody, administrators, faculty, students, boosters, supporters, everybody on board of saying, hey, let's try to maximize our potential. You see uh, what uh, that can do when our basketball team goes to the tournament, plays a couple of games, got a lot of exposure for our university. Um, so being a part of that and obviously being a part of the tradition before and having a little juice and some credibility, uh, certainly one of my goals is to help move the program along um, procedurally, infrastructure, facilities, funding, all that, and get it to the level where we all want it to be. Was that well, just coaching at your alma mater and just the, all the advantages that Davis does provide, or was that the biggest draw you want to take this job? Well, my goal really has always been to make a difference, and I think sometimes that sounds a little bit corny. So you look around, no matter what the situation is, and you say, where can I make the biggest difference? Um, and I think probably for me, I could make the biggest difference at Davis, uh, just because of having played there and coached there and my affiliations with, I think it's sort of funny, I mean, I Will Lauder, who, uh, I took a class from Will Lauder, Herb Schmallenberger was the coach before Soaker, he was my advisor. <laughs> I don't feel like I'm that old. I don't know. I don't know Crip Toomey, who the old field was named after, but uh, I just know all these players and all these coaches that have been there for forever. Uh, so that gives me a little bit of insider juice, I think, and, and allows me a little more credibility, I think, when it comes to trying to push this thing along. It's uh, it's been such a tremendous coaching career. Uh, why is that? Why do you think you should be able to the coach? I always call it my baptism of excellence. I really do, and there. There were so many little things I learned there as a player and a coach. Jim Soaker was a Hall of Fame coach there. He was very unique and very special in his own right. Uh, there were a bunch of other coaches, Bob Foster and Bob Biggs and, and Fred Arp and Sam Young and uh, Steve Bronson and uh, um, Mike Murawski. A lot of long time guys that had played and or coached there, um, but very well steeped in the teaching, the art of teaching, the art of motivation, um, and what really that means. And I think that, obviously we all had a great experience there, it was very meaningful, our coaches were very impactful in our lives as well as the football part of it. And so yeah, there were a ton of Mike Bellotti and Chris Peterson and Gary Patterson didn't go to school there but he did coach there, uh, Paul Hackett and uh, Nathaniel Hackett. Um, there's a lot of guys, Kahari Jones is with BC, there's a lot of, and a slew of high school coaches as well. Mike Morawski is now at College of Idaho and Keith Buckley is at Pacific in Oregon. There's a ton of, ton of guys who learned how to coach correctly, learned how to treat kids correctly, learned how to balance their lives, their marriages, their kids. There's an art form to that, but I think they did a good job of teaching us that there. Davis is such a great job. UC Davis is such a tremendous school. Uh, you guys do have a rich tradition. How do you learn us that and now make it, making that tradition carry over now into the, the, the division one? Yeah, a lot of it is really just galvanizing people. I think there's a little policies and procedures that they 
uh, whether you're an administrator or somebody on campus that can help us, whether it's uh, parking or uh, <laughs> you know filling out paperwork somewhere here or there. There's so many little things that go into it. Uh, obviously, players in California are very excited about the opportunity. There's obviously a ton of players in California. Um, but also getting our supporters on board of understanding. One of the things that we face a little bit is, uh, obviously, when I was there as a coach and a player, we didn't have much. We had a great football team. Um, but as you guys know, in the modern era of football and sports and athletics, in anything really, that's not how it is anymore. When I went to school, nobody cared what the locker room looked like. Nobody cared what the weight room looked like. They really didn't. That was not. Now those those things are a big deal. So you have to be able to get in the facilities game a little bit from a functional standpoint to be able to harness and utilize all your student athletes as well as your football players in a, in a meaningful way um, to have the kind of facilities and procedures that they can come in and train and develop themselves and be a part of something special. So we've got to get our supporters on board there to help us financially you know, put some things in place uh, to help us get to where we need to be. On the field, what were uh, some of your main impressions from what you've seen so far? I love our guys. I really do. I, and I, I know every coach may say that, but I'm just... We have such unique, special quality of kids. It's just unbelievable. Um, and their work ethic, their buy-in has been tremendous. Ron Gould did a great job recruiting. There's a lot of players there athletically and really great kids and great students. Um, um, so a lot of positive energy. It's hard to gauge. We have so many new guys coming in uh, this fall that were not there in the spring. We had some guys that really didn't practice a lot in spring because of injuries, so I didn't get to see them much. So in terms of what we actually can do, I really don't know. I really don't know. So that will be very uh, that will be very fun to see how that turns out and everybody always says are you excited I'm just excited working with our guys I mean I saw Keelan Culberson walk by out there I mean they're just they're just such engaging kids I and mean, I really love to be around them and so when camp opens up I'll be fired up that I just get to hang out with these guys every day Tim Plow really well respected guy amongst these coaches one bright minds in the league as well as young coaches you know, so I get him how much how much would that help you in your transition how much would that help you yeah he's really 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 special Special. Uh, obviously played and coached at Davis, knows the league well, has done some great things uh, in the league as a coordinator. Uh, he really, in my mind, completes a circle. He did not play and coach with Soaker, but he was around Coach Soaker and was influenced by Coach Soaker. So he kind of has that whole circle um, complete. And obviously a rich quarterbacking tradition at Davis. Uh, we've had a lot more quarterbacks drafted than a lot of FBS teams. Uh, and he understands all of that. So good guy also, a fun guy. He's not a big ego guy. Guy. Um, he's fun to be around. He's very creative. Uh, brings a lot to the staff. Obviously, being an ex-Aggie and knowing a lot of the Aggies, and try to get those guys fired up. Uh, but yeah, I like our staff a bunch. Our defensive coordinator Robert Tucker is really awesome as well. So, uh, but but Tim is a unique talent and unique because he went to school with Davis. Last question for you. Um, what are your expectations internally for this team this year? People always hate those cliches by coaches. I haven't been in the league enough and I haven't been around our guys enough to really concretely say, oh, let's do this or let's do that. Uh, there are things, I think, in terms of our program, in terms of managing who we are that are really important, uh, understanding who we are, sticking with that, detaching from the result and hanging in there with the process. All those things are really important to me. In terms of concretely, I don't think we got I couldn't intelligently say that because I don't know. I don't know what our team's capable of. I don't know. I, I've obviously watched a lot of film and know the league, and I know there's a lot of great teams in this league. So, but every Saturday will be a, a new a new episode. Appreciate it, coach.